Hey everyone, this is Christian with ChillTech, and this is my review of the Moto Z Play Droid by Motorola. So first things first, what is this phone? The Moto Z Play Droid is a 5.5 inch phablet that is part of the Z family of Motorola phones. This means that they work with the Moto Mods. Mods are accessories that attach directly to the back of the phone and give additional functionality. More on that later. From the performance end, this phone uses the Snapdragon 625 processor, so it's at the bottom of the Z family. What that does, however, is allow this phone to have their longest lasting battery with a rated 50 hours of use. Since this is a droid, it's only available for Verizon, but there is a GSM version available that has the same specs. Okay, so for this review, I don't want to bore you with a lot of specs and details, since you can easily read that yourself. Rather, I want to relay my experience with this phone to you and hopefully help you make a decision whether this will be a good purchase for yourself or as a gift. Oh, this battery, wow. I'm a heavy user, very heavy user of phones. Just ask Jovan. <laughs> that means that I'm a very harsh critic of battery life in specific. This is compounded by the fact that manufacturers routinely exaggerate longevity. So, was I able to use this phone for 50 hours? No. Was I able to use this phone all day? Absolutely yes. I can honestly say that this is the first phone that I was able to use all day without modifying my habits and still have 20% battery when it was time for bed. For a good portion of my testing time, I was traveling out of the state and didn't have a mobile charger, so I attached a Tumi PowerPack Moto Mod with an additional 2200 milliamp hours of battery. With this attached, I was able to travel up and down the east coast of the United States, from Maryland to South Carolina. I was in areas of strong signal, as well as areas of weak signal, and used the GPS every day. Even with all of this, on top of my normal usage, the phone didn't let me down. That was seriously impressive. Okay, so to be honest, I mainly use my smartphones for two things. First, it's a mobile phone. That's obvious. Second, it's a mobile gaming device. So how did it stack up? As I mentioned earlier, I was all over the place with this phone, and I never once lost a signal. Calls were clear and crisp, and the GPS never left me hanging. Switching between apps and loading apps was a breeze. This phone has plenty of power for everyday tasks, and performs excellently at its primary function. Gaming, gaming, gaming. While this isn't a flagship phone, it performed great in all the games that I play. I didn't notice any lagging or stuttering, and the screen looked beautiful. Now, if you want the latest and greatest and to ensure that you can play all the new games for the next couple of years, this may not be the best choice. But if you want a phone that will play your current games, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, and don't forget that that great battery life of this phone applies here as well. Now, I don't take a lot of pictures or video, and when I do, my expectations are probably pretty low. I only ask that the process be easy and the results look good. This phone definitely ticked off both of those boxes. As a mid-range option, I think it would be hard pressed to beat the quality. If camera quality is super important to you, however, you'd be better off with a high-end flagship phone. Both the iPhone 7 and the Google Pixel are excellent in that respect. So what are my overall thoughts? Smartphones for me have become like TVs or coffee makers. As long as it does what it needs to do and is good quality, it probably fits the bill. To catch my eye, it needs something outstanding or unique. When it comes to the mods aspect of the Z family, I do wonder if it will really take off or not. I feel like not. It could be a hassle to switch them, especially if you have a case on your phone. I mean, how many people really need to attach a projector directly to the back of their phone? As far as the battery mod that I tested, I would think I'd rather have a case with a built-in battery for added protection. I'd love to see that as a mod. 
That being said, the battery on this phone is the star of this phone, and I can wholly recommend this device on that basis alone. At around $400, you won't find a better battery, and I really don't think you'll find a better battery on any phone at any price. In conclusion, if you're in the market for a phone that will last you all day, or simply a well-priced mid-range option, this is the phone for you. If you have any thoughts or simply questions about my experience, please leave them in the comments below. As always, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.